in the last video we learnt about clouds and before that we also learnt about temperature today we'll be learning about other important factors that influence or affect weather of a particular area so on this particular snapshot the presence of cloud and the percentage of humidity may help us understand that there could be a possibility of rain right but these are not accurate these are just predictions so let's see what exactly is precipitation so most of us here must be loving the monsoon season right we love to jump on the puddles and we also secretly love to get wet in the rain do you remember the monsoon afternoons where you sit with a hot plate or a hot bowl of noodles right at your window and enjoy the beautiful rain outside do you remember the winter mornings where you see tiny droplets of water on the grasses and leaves so all of this are just different forms of precipitation yes precipitation is what you love about this weather so when temperatures are high water evaporates from water bodies into the atmosphere as water vapor this water vapor on going to higher altitudes become tiny droplets of water just like at our home when we cook water vapor goes up into the atmosphere and they condense to form tiny droplets of water this tiny droplets of water come together and condense to form clouds so this is known as condensation after condensation when clouds cannot hold any more water they precipitate so at our homes when we cook the lid that we use to cover the cooking utensil often has tiny droplets of water similar thing happens to the clouds so when this tiny droplets of water gets accumulated again and again and it's get very heavier then it precipitates in the form of rain hail or snow so these are different types of precipitation so as i just mentioned in the beginning in the winter mornings or in the monsoon mornings you see this tiny droplets of water on leaves grasses or flowers or benches that are outside so what exactly are these well these are dew drops so they are often referred to as dew so when moist air comes in contact with cool surface so the entire night these surfaces the surface of leaf the surface of grass flowers benches or any other thing that was exposed to the cold temperature the entire night they usually get very cold so when moisture in the air comes in contact with these cool surfaces they condense to form tiny droplets of water which is known as dew so this was the first form of precipitation and that is dew let's move on to other forms of precipitation so have you ever made snowballs and thrown at your sister or brother or have you ever made a snowman as he is making here isn't it fun well this is snow as i just mentioned so snow is just another form of precipitation so to define snow we could say that snow is precipitation in the form of small white ice crystals formed directly from the water vapor or moisture in the air at a temperature less than 0 degree celsius and it usually falls down as snowflakes and then accumulate so what did we understand we understood that snow is a form of precipitation and when it is formed well when temperatures are below 0 degree celsius then the moisture in the air or water vapor in the air turns into small white ice crystals that falls as snowflakes so they accumulate and this is known as snow so here we have another form of precipitation have you ever come across such big balls of ice well these are known as hail 
but how are they formed so when the moisture in the air freezes at a faster rate and becomes large crystals of ice they are known as hail so to define hail we could say that when drops of water freezes together in cold upper regions of the thunderstorm clouds or rather in the upper layers of the atmosphere in simple words they form hail so these frozen chunks of ice as you can see here are called hailstones and they are usually round shaped however sometimes you may also find hailstones in the form of an onion or they may appear like an onion so you see how big these are and they could be very very dangerous so hailstones are regarded as one of the most dangerous forms of precipitation when received in the form of hailstorms so animals and insects are believed to predict changes in weather very fast so at one particular point of the year you see ants carrying eggs in their mouth so it only denotes that rain is going to occur so you see that they are very clever in predicting changes in weather so how does this occur water evaporates from the water bodies and they form tiny droplets of water they form clouds and on condensation they precipitate on meeting an obstruction when the clouds cannot hold any more moisture content so they precipitate in the form of rain rain is usually very heavy and may not be uniform however when rain comes on in a lighter form they are known as drizzle drizzle are more uniform and are rhythmic now there's an instrument to measure the amount of rain fall in a particular area right just like other instrument to measure other factors we also have an instrument to measure the amount of rainfall and it is known as rain gauge so what exactly is a rain gauge a rain gauge is an instrument that measures the amount of rainfall of a particular area over a certain period of time right so let's see how does this work but before seeing how a rain gauge works help me answer this question so which instrument is used to measure the amount of rainfall at a particular place is it a barometer or is it a thermometer or a stevenson screen or is it a rain gauge yes we just learned that it is a rain gauge that is used to measure the amount of rainfall a rain gauge has three parts to it a funnel a small vessel that measures up to 1 inch and a bigger jar in an open area they are placed together like this and when rainfall occurs water is collected in the smaller vessel through the funnel and the extra water overflows through the hole into the bigger jar after that the water in the smaller vessel is poured into another empty jar and it's measured and it comes into 1 inch water of course then the water in the bigger jar is also poured and measured into the same jar it comes up to 0.31 inches so when all the water together is measured it comes into 1 inch plus 0.31 inch that is 1.31 inches so we just learnt about another form of precipitation and that was rain but did you know that there are imaginary lines that could be drawn to join places having the same amount of rainfall yes just like here on the map of india these lines actually join places that have had same amount of rainfall at a particular period of time so what are these lines called these lines are known as iso heights where iso means similar and height means rainfall so 
So you see that the word isohydes are imaginary lines that join places having the same amount of rainfall. So imaginary lines, you have to be very careful that they are not visible lines, they cannot be seen, but they are imaginary lines that join places having the same amount of rainfall at a given period of time. So this is a map of India showing ISO heights in millimeter per year in India in 2007. So these ISO heights are imaginary lines here drawn on the map of India and they are joining places having the same amount of rainfall in 2007. So here is another map of India. This is a map of the natural vegetation of India from 24th May 2008. So what exactly do you see here? You see that the different parts of India are colored differently and there is a legend given that is denoting which color is of which vegetation. So you see this light green color here tells us about the tropical deciduous vegetation, right? That means that this area had received enough rainfall that it has a dense and huge vegetation. However, in comparison to say this yellow region which shows you tropical thorny vegetation is making it very obvious that it has not received enough rainfall to have a dense vegetation and it has left the area arid. So this yellow region here suffers or experiences an arid climate and it has a thorny vegetation. So different places have received different amounts of rainfall and that is why they have different types of vegetation. So ISO heights can also help us understand the vegetation cover of a place or a region, right? So we just understood precipitation and the different forms of precipitation and how it affects or influences weather. So now let us understand what is humidity. Well, humidity is another factor that affects weather. So in the very beginning, I had mentioned about humidity. In this particular snapshot, it says that the humidity is 83%, right? So what does this actually denote? Why can we say that the presence of 83% of humidity can bring rainfall? Well, before answering that, we need to understand what humidity actually is. Have you ever seen the glass of the windows at your house like this? Have you ever wondered why this happens? Well, it happens because of the humidity. Well, so let's define humidity and let's understand what actually humidity is. So humidity can be defined as the amount of water vapor in the air or the moisture content of the air is the humidity of the air. So let's see how humidity is related to weather. Well, the water vapor content of the atmosphere varies from place to place and from time to time because the humidity capacity of the air is determined by temperature. Yes, a very important factor. So at places where temperature is very, very high, there is more of evaporation and the humidity increases. So places that are warm, they have a higher humidity, which means that there's more possibility of rain. However, in cold places where temperatures are very low, then the evaporation rate also decreases or evaporation is almost nil. So there is no possibility of cloud formation, neither rainfall. So humidity actually helps us understand the moisture content in the air and the possibility of precipitation in the form of rain or any other form of precipitation. Right. So now that we have understood that humidity is the amount of moisture in the air, we also need to understand that there are two types of humidity. One is absolute humidity. So what exactly is absolute humidity? So if at a particular place we sit down to measure the amount of moisture at a particular period of time, right? we there get absolute humidity. So to define absolute humidity, I could say that absolute humidity refers to the amount of water vapor contained in a 
parcel or unit volume of air at a given temperature. So at a particular temperature, the amount of moisture that is actually present in a unit volume of air, it is known as absolute humidity, right? And absolute humidity is often measured and expressed in millimeters and centimeters. However, there's another type of humidity and that is relative humidity. But what exactly is relative humidity? Well, we just understood absolute humidity. Well, relative humidity is the ratio. It is a ratio between the amount of water vapor actually present in the air at a particular temperature to the greatest amount of possible water vapor that could be present in the same temperature. So we need to be very, very careful and we need to be very clear about this that relative humidity is the ratio. Ratio between what? Ratio between the amount of moisture at a given temperature in a unit volume of air to the amount of possible or the greatest possible amount of water vapor in the same temperature at a unit volume of air. So it talks about a ratio and this is absolute humidity that talks about the actual amount of water vapor in a unit volume of air. However, between these two, we often take the help of relative humidity in predicting rainfall. Why? Because in absolute humidity, we only get to know the amount of water vapor in a unit volume of air at a particular temperature, right? But we don't know what actually could be the amount of moisture or water vapor in that temperature. So relative humidity here actually helps us by giving us a ratio, a ratio between the amount of water vapor that is present to the amount of water vapor that actually could be present, right? So this helps us better in comparison to absolute humidity in predicting or determining the possibility of rainfall. Also, just like absolute humidity is measured in millimeter or centimeter, relative humidity is often expressed as percentage. So now, we learned about rain gauge being an instrument to measure the amount of rainfall. But do we have a special instrument to measure humidity? Yes, as you can just see here that hygrometer is used as an instrument to measure humidity. Now what exactly is a hygrometer? So a wet and dry thermometer used to measure humidity is called hygrometer. So you see there's a wet thermometer and there's a dry thermometer. So you see that in a hygrometer we have a wet thermometer and a dry thermometer. So the difference between the two temperatures recorded in these two thermometers helps us understand the humidity of a particular area at a given temperature. Right. So today in this video, we learned about the different forms of precipitation. We learned how precipitation helps us understand the weather of a particular area or how it influences the weather of a particular area. We further learn that humidity is also a very important factor that influences weather as it talks about or tells us about the moisture content in the air. We learn that hygrometer is an instrument that is used to measure humidity of a particular area. In the next video, we will be learning about atmospheric pressure and wind as important factors that also influence weather. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5,000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.